So this time we're going to take a look at a steering wheel situation in which the leather is actually missing. Now this is not the only repair available for this kind of a thing, but we're going to do just the one kind of repair and that involves replacing the leather in this hole. I think you'll find that using any automotive leather will work. Now this is our plan if it works. We want to trim the hole to the shape of the patch. And the other thing we have to keep in mind here is that the steering wheel is worn thin. If we go from the non-worn part, we can see how it gets thinner and thinner until it finally reaches the hole. So we're going to have to adapt our patch to match that. So I'll go ahead and put some drop claws in place and then we'll come back and we'll be ready to work. So all you'll need is any old scrap of automotive leather and a simple hand tool, this skiving knife. Here I'm just shaving a bit off uh, from the back side. How far to go? No one really knows. Uh, just uh, make a good estimate. The thing is you want to avoid a patch that's higher than the surrounding leather. And we know it was worn quite thin there. So now we can just mark out the size patch we think we're going to need. Here I'm using a leather marking pen which comes in handy for something like this, especially when we need to make a very fine line for cutting. Now as I trim this rough patch, we're not concerned too much about getting a straight line. In fact, I think if it's a bit of a curved line that will be more stealthy on the steering wheel itself. And of course I want to round these corners. A sharp corner poking up might give you a bit of difficulty, so let's eliminate that right now. Okay, so that looks like it's going to work just fine. And here's a little trick that's so simple even I thought of it. Just take uh, some masking tape here. I'm using half inch tape uh, just to anchor down your plug where it's going to go. And that way you never ever have to totally lift it off the repair again. Again, this uh, particular leather marking pen lets me put a fine line and that will ensure that we get a really close fitting patch. Now I can just let the masking tape loose on one side and I'm ready to trim. And it's probably time for a new blade, but this is how you find out. I have one more spot to trim better over here on the right hand side, so I'm just going to fold this flap back over in the opposite direction and that'll let me get a good grip on that little piece that needs to come off. There we go. So that's uh, ready now for a little bit of adhesive. Now what I'm using here is a gel type of super glue. It's very important not to use the thin kind of super glue here because as you know the leather fibers act like a wick and it'll pull up the thin super glue into a big area and it'll be hard as a rock in a large area. 
That's what we're trying to avoid here is a hard spot. But if we use a gel glue, then it's just permeating barely the fibers of each piece on the edge, binding them together. Of course, the gel glue takes a little bit of time to cure, and so we'll spend a little bit of time repositioning. And that's nice because you, you do get a chance to push it down and, and cause it to mate up properly. You've got a little bit of time to work with it here. It doesn't hurt to put a, a drop or two of the glue right in the middle of the patch either to hold that down securely to that uh, rubber core. Now we can loosen and hinge our patch back the other way so that we can get this side. And you can see here I'm using just a very, very little bit of adhesive, just enough to get into the fibers that are going to be joining up. That's all you need. Again, we're not going to end up with any hard spots in here, even though we're using a super glue gel. The idea is for our patch to feel just as soft as the original leather. So we've got everything here feeling just like it's all one leather piece. Here again, we have a little bit of time because the gel glue doesn't set really quickly. We've got time to reposition our patch, but do keep pushing it down because at some point in the next minute, that's going to stay down and grab firmly. And here you can see what a really, really neat job that gives you. Now, if the patch is still a little bit high where it joins up to the wheel, you can use your skiving knife to sort of shave a little bit off of there. The trouble is it tends to gouge the leather on the top surface. I think maybe I'll try using a Dremel tool next time. Now we're gonna go about anchoring all of these edges. The glue of choice here is also a gel glue, but it's a, more of a medium viscosity gel. And notice how I'm laying it in a small area and then sanding over it directly. If I have too much, I'm doing a swipe with the bounty towel there. But I'm sanding directly onto the wet gel glue. And what's happening here is that the leather fibers that I'm loosening up are becoming mixed with the glue. So there's very little glue there. That is not enough glue to make any one spot really hard. And yet uh, we're filling it in with leather fibers. So even the joinery we're doing here incorporates more and more leather. We use the same technique in plastic repairs, of course. And our sandpaper of choice is 220 because 220 is rough enough to dig up some fibers and rough enough to shape the repair itself. And you can tell a lot by just uh, rubbing your hand over the repair. Sometimes you can tell more doing that than you can visually. Before pushing record, I had wiped on some primer as I'm doing here now. And the idea of the primer is to anchor any kind of loose fibers that are still sticking up. And we're trying to preserve the integrity of all of that very, very thin leather adjacent to the hole. And now that that very thin rotted leather is protected, we can go about cleaning the entire steering wheel and prepping it for our next step. And it looks like our prep step 
dislodged something that wasn't anchored properly, and we have a pinhole. So why not just a little bit of gel glue and some sanding, and that'll fill it in, and we'll be ready to go with our next uh, finer filler step. And it's time for a guide coat of color, as you know. Now we're going to plan on using a very flexible air dry filler for resurfacing our repair. And as usual, this is a kind of a heavy bodied filler. And if you spread it with a paper towel, it'll spread kind of dry. Uh, so as you can see, what I like to do is put a little color on the paper towel and spread it out uh, with that. And then as I'm dabbed it, it's also created a little bit of texture. Uh, that texture in this instance helps me to see better when I'm sanding it, what are the high spots and what are the low spots. Of course, we don't have much texture at all on this steering wheel, so a texture is not our end goal on this. Basically, with this repair, we're better off just to smooth it out. And so now I'm doing a second application, as you can see, of that same filler and color. Uh, just spreading it, so I'm making a ramp. Basically, you know, I, I was thinking that my patch was, in fact, a little bit higher than the surrounding leather. And so the filler helps me to build a ramp up and then down from that patch. Here again, a little bit of primer just to make sure everything is anchored really well. That primer holds everything fast quite nicely. Now quite typically, as you have had to work around on the inside of the wheel, you also want to spin the wheel around. I mean, you can repair it here like I'm doing and see quite a bit of it, but uh, it'll fool you until you turn the steering wheel. So you'll have to crank up the vehicle and give that wheel a spin around. I have done repairs before where I thought everything was absolutely perfect and then when I turned the steering wheel 180 I'm looking down here and I can't believe that this looks as bad as it does. So <laughs> make it always a point. Uh, don't just judge from the appearance of it as it's uh, at 12 o'clock bring it on down to 6 o'clock and take a look at it. It's also easier to work here because gravity is in your favor. You can put the filler in the, and uh, wipe it in here much easier anyway. And as you see, that is exactly what we needed there. Now I'm going to take a minute and mask this off. We are, however, going to come back and redo these spokes. These metallic spokes are worn down to the black, so we're going to touch those up before we leave. But nonetheless, a little uh, quick uh, masking here will allow us to avoid spraying onto the switches. When I'm spraying the steering wheel, as you can see, I'm holding the gun off to the side here and spinning the wheel around. So it's like 
The gun is like the tool in the lathe. And let the lathe turn your wheel. First of all, I'm getting around the side. Now I'm coming up from around the back. How many times have you sprayed the wheel and realized you could see something from the windshield side? So the sides and back are done and now I can do the face. Of course, everything is masked off with the drop cloths. So I'm free to spray at will. And as is a habit, I'm putting the top down to the six o'clock position, of course, and spraying in there, as I mentioned. Always a good habit to get into. And for the color, I'm using a satin leather base with pigments at about 20%, adding cross-linker and a bit of slip additive. Now, I didn't in this instance, but for newer cars and for retail customers as well, I will add a high wear clear over top of the color. And that will also contain the same additives. Now, coming up, we're going to have to do these metallic spokes. And this will be really a, a subject for another repair video, this ultra metallic trim coating. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on that here. What I'm going to do is speed through the end of this and we'll just uh, show you the end results of the steering wheel. And in the meantime, we'll let you enjoy an original tune by yours truly on guitar, A Stroll in the Park. That's your 2011 Chevrolet Avalanche, a little bit more like new.